Once again, I'd like to thank you for being here, and I will now have a few questions. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, we don't have the report in hand, so could you explain for us the special counsel's articulated reason for not reaching a decision on obstruction of justice, and if it had anything to do with the department's longstanding guidance on not indicting a sitting president, and you say you disagreed with some of his legal theories. What did you disagree with him on? Um, the, I, I, I'd leave it to his description in the report, the special counsel's own articulation of, of why he did not want to make a determination as to whether or not there was an obstruction of fence. But I will say that when we met with him, uh, Deputy Attorney General uh, Rosenstein and I met with him along with Ed O'Callaghan, uh, who is the principal associate deputy. On March 5th, we specifically asked him about the OLC opinion and whether or not he was taking the position that he would have found a crime but for the existence of the OLC opinion. And he made it very clear uh, several times that that was not his position. He, he was not saying that but for the OLC opinion he would have found a crime. He made it clear that he had not made the determination that there was a crime. Did you disagree with him on? May I follow up on that, Mr. Attorney General? What did you disagree with him on? Given that, uh, why did you and Mr. Rosenstein feel the need you had to take it to the next step to conclude that there was no crime, especially given that DOJ policy? Well, the very prosecutorial function and all our powers as prosecutors, including the power to convene grand juries and the compulsory process that's involved there, is for one purpose and one purpose only. It's determined, yes or no, was alleged conduct criminal or not criminal. That is, that is our responsibility, and that's why we have the tools we have. And we don't go through this process just to collect information and throw it out to the public. We collect this information. We use that compulsory process for the purpose of making that decision. And because uh, the special counsel did not make that decision, we felt the department had to, and that was a decision by uh, me and the deputy attorney general. Yes. Or did the special counsel indicate uh, that he wanted you to make the decision or that it should be left for Congress? And also, how do you respond to criticism you're receiving, receiving from congressional Democrats that you're acting more as a attorney for the president rather than uh, as the chief law enforcement officer? Well, uh, Special Counsel Mueller did not indicate that his purpose was to leave the decision to Congress. I hope that was not his view, since we don't convene grand juries and conduct criminal investigations for that purpose. Uh, he did not, I didn't talk to him directly about uh, the fact that we were making the decision, but I am told that his reaction to that was that it was uh, my, my prerogative as Attorney General to make that decision. Captain. Uh, Attorney General Barb Hathen here at Fox News. Hi there. Is there anything you can share today about your review of the genesis of the Russia investigation and whether assets have been provided to investigate? Uh, no, today I'm really focused just on the process of releasing this report. Attorney General, senior Democrats in Congress have asked for Robert Mueller himself to testify. Uh, Robert Mueller remains a Justice Department employee as of this moment. Will you permit him to testify publicly to Congress? I have no objection to Bob Mueller personally testifying. Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney General, it's not the Democrats who have questioned some of the process here. A Republican appointed judge on Tuesday said you have, quote, created an environment that has caused a significant part of the American public to be concerned about these redactions. You cleared the president on obstruction. The president is fundraising off of your comments about spying. And here you have remarks that are quite generous to the president, including acknowledging his feelings and his emotions. So what do you say to people on both sides of the aisle who are concerned that you are trying to protect the president? Well, actually, the, the statements about his, his, his uh, sincere beliefs are, for, are, are recognized in the report that there was substantial evidence for that. So I'm not sure what your basis is for saying that I am being generous to the president. You face an unprecedented situation. It just seems well, like there's a lot is, of effort to say, to, to go out of your way to acknowledge how this Well, is there, is there another precedent for it? No, but it's unusual. Okay, so that, unprecedented is an accurate description, isn't it? Yes, but okay. what do you say to people who are concerned that you are trying to protect the president? Eric. Eric. 
there's a lot of public interest in the absence of the special counsel and members of his team. Was he invited to join you up on the podium? Why is he not here? This is his report, obviously, that you're talking about today. No, sir. The report he did for me as the attorney general. He is required under the regulation to, pr to provide me with a confidential report. I'm here to, to discuss my response to that report and my decision entirely discretionary to make it public, since these reports are not supposed to be made public. That's what I'm here to discuss. Of impropriety for you to come out and sort of what appears to be sort of spinning the report the before public, the public gets a chance to read it? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.